In this video, we'll be looking at some pre-calculus questions on limit and continuity. The first question here says, evaluate the limit of tan x cos x all over x as x approaches as x approaches zero. The second question here says, evaluate the limit of x squared minus 49 all over x minus 7 as x approaches 7. All right. So how do we solve these questions or how do we evaluate these limits? Of course, as usual, our first tax, let's write out the solution to this question. Solution. So starting with question one, question one here, we have that we're taking the limit, the limit of tan x cos x. So limit, limit of tan x cos x all over, so all divided by x. This, of course, as x approaches 0, so as x approaches 0. How do we solve this particular question? Now, we've already explained the concept of limit and continuity in our previous class. I'll leave a link to our previous classes on limit and continuity in the video description. Now, for this particular question, how do we solve this question? What do we do? To evaluate this question here, you have to look at the question critically. What you're given here is actually the main question here is tan x and then cos x all divided by so this all divided by x i have this now my task would be how to simplify this okay how do i simplify this particular question what do i do for us to simplify this question you need an idea of a trigonometric function now recall that from the idea of trigonometry that tan x it's equal to sine x all over, so this all over cos x. All right, so this is a trig function. Now let's call this our first equation, equation one. Let's call this our second equation, equation two. Let's substitute the value of, of equation two into one. So if I say put, put equation two into equation one, now, in place of tan x, I will now write sine x over cos x. So tan x becomes sine x all over cosine or cos x. This value here is tan x. So that's now tan x multiplying cos x. So this value here multiplies cos x. So this all over, this all over, all over x here. So this all over x. So this is another form of writing tan x cos x all over x. From here, if you do a simple mathematical process, we can see that from here, cos x will cancel cos x, and that goes off. So I'll be left with sine x all over 1. Of course, all of the numerator here would give you sine x. So everything there is sine x, so that becomes sine of x all over x. So I have this. In essence, the question becomes the limit as x approaches 0. So I'll just write this. So it becomes the limit as x approaches 0 for initially we had the initial question as tan x cos x all over x. Now we simplify this in a simplified form. We said it's the same thing as what's there, sine x over x. So here becomes this into sine x all over x. Now mind you, we've not taken the limit yet. We are yet to evaluate the limit. All we have done here is just to simplify the given function. All right. So let's proceed with this now. Now at this point, the question will now be, which of the methods do we use in simplifying this? Recall that in our previous class, we discussed the concept of limit and continuity. And we said one of the easiest methods of solving problems on limit and continuity would be a direct substitution. And for direct substitution, it means I'll put x here as 0. But if I do that, if I, if I put... Um, x has been equal to 0, I'll end up having something like this sine in place of x, I have 0 all over x here, denominator becomes 0. So all over 0. And if I do that, sine 0 is 0 all over denominator 0. And that gives you what there? Undefined or indeterminate. Alright, so it becomes um, undefined. Let's write this as undefined or indeterminate.
All right, so let's write this as undefined or indeterminate. So it goes off. So in essence, we, we cannot use um, direct substitution. Instead, let's use another method. The method we employ here is called L'Hopital's rule, right? L'Hopital's rule. Again, I've explained the concept of L'Hopital's rule in the playlist on limit and continuity. As I said, I will link the playlist in the video description, right? So how does how does L'Hopital's rule work? Or how, how do we solve this using, using L'Hopital's rule? What to do is this, you have limit of distance to zero. I'm having sine x all over x. Now to solve this using L'Hopital's rule, all we have to do is to differentiate both numerator and denominator with respect to the variable here, which is x. So that means what I'll do here is simply d all over dx of the numerator, which is what? Sine x, which is sine x. So differentiate numerator all over d all over dx, that's differentiating with respect to x of denominator, which is x. Now, if I solve it this way, this is equal to, if I differentiate numerator, if I differentiate sine x, of course, I'll have my value as cos x all over, for denominator there, if I differentiate x, I'll have my answer as what? 1. So I have this, right? So you have this as 1. Cos x over 1 should give you what there? Cos x. Now, at this point, you can now put x so put x as equal to 0. Now we're putting x as equal to 0 because you have as x approaches 0. So this 0 here is what you substitute. And if I do that, it becomes equal to, this will be equal to, we have cos x. Cos x now would be cos x is what? 0. And if I solve that, cos 0 gives you what there? 1. So I have this. So therefore, the answer to this question is equal to what? One. All right. So for this question here, would employ L'Hopital's rule and not direct substitution because direct substitution will give us zero over zero, which is what the indeterminate. All right. All right. So that's how you solve question one. Let's solve question number two. All right. Question number two. For two, we have the limit limit of a function. The function here is x squared minus forty nine. So x squared minus 49 all over x minus 7 as x approaches 7 just to confirm that yep that's correct so how do we solve this question the first thing to observe here is that if i put x as equal to 7 if i put x um, put x as equal to 7 what do we have we we'll have this function as being equal to x squared which is this x squared here becomes 7 squared so i'm having 7 squared minus 49 all over this x here becomes 7 minus 7 so just write that as 7 minus 7 7 minus 7 and that's equal to 7 squared gives you 49 so 49 minus 49 gives you 0 all over denominator gives you 7 minus 7 that gives you what there 0 and 0 over 0 is, is called what there indeterminates all right so that means for this question here we can't use direct substitution since we are having indeterminate value so that won't, that won't work now what we have to do now is that looking at the question again limit of x squared minus 49 all over x minus 7 as x approaches 7 looking at the question here we can see that i can the numerator here that's x squared minus 7 can be expressed or as a difference of two squares and by difference of two squares, I mean that x squared minus 49 can still be expressed as x squared minus 49 is the value of 7 squared. That becomes 7 squared. You can see that this is equal to a difference of two squares. And for the concept of difference of two squares, we said if you have a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b multiplying a minus b. You'd have this. If this is the case, that means x squared minus 7 squared will be equal to a, that's x, plus b, the first in there, that's 7, into a, that's x, minus b, that's 7. So x squared minus 7 squared is equal to x plus 7 multiplying x minus 7. Now let's bring the value here. If you bring the value here, we'd have that the limit of x squared minus 49 all over 
x minus 7 as x approaches 7 is actually equal to the numerator is equal to uh, the limit as x approaches 7 numerator becomes a difference of 2 square x plus 7 into x minus 7 we have this so all over denominator here is x minus 7 so we have x minus 7 if you want to you can put this in brackets it's the same thing from here watching this closely you can see that this x minus 7 can cancel x minus 7 now further simplifying we we'll have this as limits as x approaches 7 for what i have here is now x plus 7 so you have this okay now at this point i can now bring up any of the methods of solving limit and continuity or limits okay and for this one here let's start with direct substitution so using direct substitution using direct substitution substitution now observe that so far so good i've not actually used any method of difference of now observe that so far so good i have not actually used any of the methods of solving limits all i had to do here was to do or employ the concept of difference of two squares although i tried to use direct substitution here and you can see gave us indeterminate as an answer so all i had to do was just to improvise and by that i mean take a difference of two square and then i simplified up to this point now at this point i can now employ the method of finding limit and continuity which is direct substitution to do that this will be equal to when you have x plus seven just simply put x as equal to 7 because I have 7 here so x plus 7 that means that x plus 7 is equal to x is 7 so it becomes 7 plus 7 and that's equal to 14 so my answer to this question is 14 so basically this is how we solve this question okay now let me give you a task here's your task evaluate this evaluate the limits of Let's say in this case we have something that looks like x cubed. Okay, let me take off the bracket. Evaluate the limit of x cubed minus 5 minus 1 to 5 all over x minus 5 as x approaches 5. So here's your question. So you have this question here. Evaluate the limit of x cubed minus 1 to 5 all over x minus 5 as x approaches 5. Now the hint is that for your numerator, use difference of 2 cubed. And let me give you an idea of what it looks like. If, if we have a cubed minus b cubed, this is a difference of 2 cubed and this will be equal to a minus b, this into into a squared plus a b plus b squared all right so this is an expression for a difference of two cube okay a minus b into a squared plus a b plus b squared now use this hint to solve this question and then of course leave your answer in the comment section and i'll tell you if you are correct or not all right Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, like this video, also leave a comment. For your comment, I've given you a task on this particular question, right? As well as a hint. So solve this question, leave your answer in the comment section, and I will tell you if you're correct or not. Don't forget to subscribe. If it's your first time here, or you're yet to subscribe, please do well to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and select all, so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. Then finally, do all to share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Okay? Thank you and see you in our next class.